Improvements to the third generation Renault Clio have kept it at the forefront of the British super mini sector, with sportier styling complementing a sensible mix of practical small car virtues. At its heart though, it remains very simply safe, spacious and affordable. Will that be enough? Let's find out. Within just 36 months of being voted the 2006 European Car of the Year, Renault's Clio had been swamped by the frantic pace of development in the super mini sector. Such is the current state of the market. Now the French maker's response early in 2009 was this far-reaching facelift, which brought an improved range of more fuel-efficient engines, a smarter cabin and more striking styling. So good was the basic design that not much more than that was required to take this model back to a place amongst the small car class leaders. After all, whatever you're looking for in a compact hatch, the Clio ought to be able to provide in some shape or form. Entry level models cost less than some tiny city runabouts. Flagship hot hatch Renault Sport variants outperform some pricey sports cars and the uh, sports tourer estate model might be a more palatable alternative to that uh, super mini MPV you didn't really want. All of which is enough to keep Renault very competitive in a market that simply won't stand for second best. Now it's perfectly possible if you stretch to one of the Renault Sport 200 models to get yourself a Clio that handles like a go-kart. But that's not the driving experience on offer from the more affordable variants that most people actually end up buying. Which is just as well. On the kind of pop-marked roads that we have to put up with in this country, you don't want your shopping runabout to feel like a go-kart. Instead, what's needed is a well-judged blend of control and comfort, a smooth ride and plenty of grip, all of which this car provides. Now, ride quality is a particular selling point of this model. Quite simply, you feel like you're at the wheel of something much bigger and more sophisticated, particularly when you've got larger mileages to cover. This was one of the first super minis on the market that you could quite comfortably use for very long as well as very short journeys. It still remains one of the finest cars of its kind in this respect, so it's a pity from Renault's point of view that this won't be an especially high priority for most buyers. As far as town stuff is concerned, the light steering will please when dinking through urban traffic, but it'll be less welcome at high speeds on twisty roads. Uh, refinement has been improved thanks to extra sound deadening measures to combat uh, noise from the engine, the transmission and wind noise around the pillars. As for the engines on offer, well the 110 brake horsepower 1.6 litre VVT petrol unit introduced with this facelift will likely be of minority interest which is just as well since it has to be worked pretty hard to achieve rapid progress and refinement isn't its strong suit. Since the same applies to the rather feeble entry level 75 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol engine, we'd suggest that you focus your uh, searches on either the impressive 100 brake horsepower 1.2 litre TCE turbocharged petrol unit or the 1.5 litre diesel with its uh, either uh, 86 or 106 brake horsepower outputs. Now, both engines can be recommended. The uh, 1.2 litre TCE manages the impressive feat of combining a, an 11 second rest to 60 sprint time with 50 miles to the gallon regular economy, while the 1.5 litre diesel's prodigious torque makes it feel even faster. The Mark III Renault Clio was always uh, a big car, but this improved version is even larger and there's a reason for that. Now the original version of this model had a sensible but rather forgettable look that by 2009 didn't really cut it amongst a sea of more daringly styled rivals. Hence an extra 41 millimeters of length that's gone into making it look lower, leaner and more streamlined. Take this front end. The sharp lines of the air intake and the headlights combined with this thin smirking grille. It's a look that debuted with the third generation Renault Megane family hatch and it gives this Clio a much more purposeful look even in its non-sporting forms. The interior has also been upgraded with some relocation of some of the minor controls to improve user friendliness. 
despite this, the uh, cheaper models can still feel well cheap. So it's, uh, it, it's best if you can to stretch for one of the mid-range variants like this one that feature this lovely soft touch dashboard that makes all the difference. Now, uh, from this level in the Clio hierarchy upwards, you also get a much better driving position thanks to the driver's seat height adjustment and the reach adjustable steering wheel that's denied to owners of the cheaper models. Apart from this, the only slight reservation I have is that uh, visibility when parking is slightly restricted when behind the driver you turn around to look into these rather thick B and C pillars. And as for cabin space, well, although none of this revised model's extra length is available to passengers, this still remains one of the more spacious cabins in the class. Now, the 288-litre boot is a good size, um, slightly smaller than, say, a rival Ford Fiesta's with all the seats in place, but bigger than the rival Ford if you fold the split-folding rear seats down to reveal a 1,038-litre loading area. Renault's done the job properly as well, and for the times when you really need to maximise loading um, area, you can pull forward the seat bases so that you can fold these rear seats completely flat. Now, list prices suggest that you'll pay somewhere in the 10 to 17,000 pound bracket for your Clio, which, believe it or not, is pretty much par for the Super Mini course. In fact, with certain derivatives, you may even enjoy a two to 300 pound saving with this Renault against comparable Ford Fiestas and Vauxhall courses. You'll need a 16 to 17,000 pound list price budget for one of the Renault Sport hot hatch models, though. Uh, <coughs> Clio buyers can also, for an extra £500, specify uh, this uh, excellent Carmenat TomTom sat-nav system. Now most Clio customers choose between three and five door hatchback body styles with the Clio Renault Sport hot hatch variants based on the three door. If you want the slightly more versatile Sport Tourer estate variant, then you're looking at a premium of around £850 over the equivalent five door hatchback. There's a um, £1,600 premium to go from this entry-level 1.2-litre petrol engine to the uh, entry-level uh, 86 brake horsepower 1.5-litre DCI diesel. But it's less than half that premium figure if you want to go from this 75 brake horsepower 1.2 petrol to the far more satisfying 100 brake horsepower 1.2-litre TCE turbo. And that's going to be a far better solution for low-mileage customers. The uh, flagship 106 brake horsepower 1.5 DCI diesel and 110 brake horsepower 1.6 VVT petrol models will be minority choices. Now the standard gearbox is a five-speed manual, but uh, the more powerful petrol models get uh, a manual box with an extra ratio. And there's the option of a four-speed automatic if you go for the 1.6 litre VVT petrol variant. As for equipment, well, even baseline Clio's get an MP3 compatible CD stereo, front fog lights, and electric front windows. But you have to stretch to the mid-range uh, for air conditioning. Safety looks a strong point initially with a uh, five-star maximum Euro NCAP safety rating, six airbags and ABS brakes. But you do have to uh, go for plusher versions if you want the ESP stability control system that could help you out if you, uh, uh, you're on slippery surfaces or if you go into a corner too fast. Renault highlights its most fuel-efficient Clio models with Eco2 branding, badge work that applies to the entry-level 1.2 and 1.2 TCE petrol models despite the fact that they achieve nearly 140 grams per kilometre of CO2 in regular use. They will give you close to 50 miles to the gallon on, uh, in the combined fuel cycle though, which is reasonably close to the return of between 61 and 64 miles to the gallon that you'll get from the DCI 86 and DCI 106 diesel units. Now, um, with uh, CO2 returns of between 115 and 123 grams per kilometre, these diesels seem more suited to the Eco2 branding. 
the uh, 1.6 VVT petrol version certainly isn't returning 160 grams per kilometre of CO2, but it will give you 40 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle on a regular basis. What else? Well, insurance groupings range between 3 and 5 for most mainstream models, but the uh, Clio Rano Sport 200 models are in a different ball game, uh, up at group 15. Uh, residual values uh, will probably be in the 34 to 39% bracket. Uh, that's what you get from your original purchase price uh, after three years or 36,000 miles. Owen oh, Renault will throw in a three year 60,000 mile warranty. Traditionally, Renault Clios were always fun, sparky little super minis, but they were also rather cramped and noisy. When this Mark III model appeared in 2005, it corrected these failings, bringing sense and sensibility to the package. But some of this little car's character was lost along the way. Now, a facelift four years later, visited upon the car that we've been looking at here, has brought a sportier look that certainly made a difference in this regard. Improvements to this car's refinement, interior and specification should also do its sales prospects no harm. But this Clio's core attributes remain its uh, spacious cabin, its strong engine range and its high quality feel. Now those are important attributes in any small car and should uh, ensure that this Renault remains a popular choice amongst British super mini buyers.